one of our subscribers asked uh, for a quick tip with advice about using straight colors of red as opposed to using more earthy colors. Um, and this, this person apparently, uh, as she explains further, is having trouble uh, with using these really, really bright reds. Well, I can show you a few tricks about that one. I chose about the reddest thing I could find uh, to show you how I would handle working with reds, and that is red tomatoes. They, if you put uh, take a red tomato and put it, it within a light source, um, you can actually see these things happening. Now, first of all, I want to show you what not to do when you're really work when you're working with these bright, intense colors. Here's what not to do. Uh, so I'm going to be using uh, cadmium red light. Cadmium red light is a color that is very, very close to what we might call tomato red. You see, if I hold my brush right here, you can see that. Now, what you don't want to do, well, let me just go ahead here. I'm, I'm going to take this tomato. Don't have time to do all of them. So I'm just going to take that. Well, let's just do a quick, quick little uh, sketch here. And um, let's sort of create a kind of a... A tomato shape here and show you what what you what you don't want to do and I've seen people do this and then they wonder why their results is not satisfactory and that is they will take uh, I've seen people take a complete brush load of that pure high intensity color and just cover the whole thing with it and um, and, and then wonder why does it look like a tomato or whatever tomato or or um, in some cases, I don't suppose you have an apple that red, but they might ask, well, I painted it red, that's what I see. That's what a lot of people will say, that's what I see. Well, no, that's not what you see, that's what you think you see, that's what you're looking at, what you're looking for. A lot of times when we are, when we, uh, when we're looking at color, we'll call that color to ourselves, like we'll say red, and then we will block our eyes from being able to see those variations that make it look not just red, but like a red tomato. Now, what we're seeing when we look here, actually, is we're seeing very little of this. In fact, if you look here, right in here is where you see this color. You don't see that color anywhere else on the tomato. Now, here I've taken the computer and I've gone over this tomato from the lightest light and I've just gone down it and I've shown you the variations you see right there. Right in here, you see very little of that red. And so the best way to go about it is not to do this, but rather, well, one good way to do that is simply set up yourself a Valulin, which is my favorite way to do this. Alizarin Crimson is a deep red, and it's also a good color to use as a, uh, as a moving into shadow color for the brighter reds. You can see already there we have a variety of red um, that we can sort of spot in, in this range right here. So I'm going to take more of this cadmium red light and I'll just put it right here. Now we have cadmium red light and then the cadmium light, red light mixed into a from crimson right here. But we need one other thing for getting the darkest shadow that we're seeing in that, and that is into the alizarin crimson we would need to add a little green. Now I can see the questions coming now, how do I know what to add? Suppose the color you're working with is not red. Suppose the color you're working with is yellow. Or suppose the color you're working with is orange. You can always, uh, if you don't have that deep color in your tube color, you can always add the complement, and a little bit of complement at the time, you can get this value range. Now, I'm going to go into this where I put uh, just that red paint, and I'll just, just work, it on, work on top of it to show you the difference. So, very rarely, if ever, are you going to have this much out of the tube red appearing on your canvas when you're painting a red subject. The only place that out of the tube red is going to appear is where that color is transitioning 
from shadow into not in shadow. That area we call the terminator. That's the only place you're going to see it at its most intense. Now if you have flat objects like flowers and so on, you'll probably see a little bit more of it. But to have too much of this intense red there, it's just going to flatten the whole thing out. And actually, it's going to bombard your viewers. So let's, let's take a look at how we'll do this. Now I'm just taking all this red out. And uh, I'll just work my way down. Well, I'll start right here about where that terminated line is. Now you see, if I go into there with a little bit of a alizarin crimson mixed right in here, right in here like this. Let's just move that around. Just move it around. Uh, okay, that's coming a little bit uh, more shadow over here. And now I'll just weave that in. And we'll weave it in a little bit here and have it uh, grade 8. Let's get it right in here too have the Illusion Crimson to gradate into the Cadmium Red Light right in here. I normally would not put this red down first. I normally would start uh, building from the shadow areas up to the light areas. But since I have this here, I wanted to show you the difference of when you just have that flat red there and then when you begin to add some shadow to it. Now, it goes in two ways. It moves into shadow as it's going off the side right here. You can see that right there. Well, you can also see some cast shadow caused by other things. But um, just let's, if we're looking just at tomato, it will begin to move into shadow as it goes around like that. And that will then, then gradate. And I'll just gradate that in just by blending. And it will also <coughs> begin to move into shadow over here on this side. So I'll just pull some of the dark, some of the alizarin crimson over here like that. It's kind of blend. It doesn't take much just to blend it in goes into that kind of subtle shadow like that. Now I know a lot of people um, there are those who would be developing these brush strokes and planes. I'm not concerned with that. What I'm concerned with is just showing you that value gradation that you get when you're actually looking at red. Now we move even deeper in. You see right in here move even deeper into the alizarin and I'll just, well in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the very deepest shadow right here and let's just pull it up like that and from the very deepest shadow uphill like that you see let's pull it up like that and let's pull it this way because it would go that shadow goes around now I'll give that some blend let's give it a little bit more blend and then gradually this is called gradation by the way gradually blend that color whoops it picked up that dark which I did not want to happen. Let's go back into here and pull it down. There we go, like that. All right, so <clears throat> now you can see, now you can see that gradation. Now let's throw some, uh, let's throw a little bit of a occlusion. Oh, you don't have, you have a little bit of occlusion shadow right here. That's the shadow that moves totally away from, from light. Right in there, you'd have even more if that were sitting on the surface. Uh, okay, now the real, the real, Cadmium red light. Well, you can see it is only about right there. I need to wash the brush because I had that cadmium red light. Um, I mean, I have the alizarin crimson in the brush, and so that kind of made that a little bit dull there. So I'm going to show the pure stuff right here. Pure stuff appears right here where that apple moves from shadow into light. Now, what happens to tomatoes and what happens to a lot of red objects when they move past that um, terminator line into brighter light they're not red anymore they change color they'll move towards orange so i'm going to pull a little bit of cadmium yellow deep in here and get that a little bit orange and show you right here that actually begins to turn orange as it's moving more towards light and then and you can see it right there you can see that where it goes even in stronger in light you you see you don't see red but you see orange so you can do this experiment uh, you can do this experiment by taking a red uh, an actual ripe red tomato put it under a light and then look just for, look for change in color now I haven't done the green or anything like that and then you see, we always see that uh, what we call the highlight, which is the center light. That's the light that's, that's where it's really reflecting. It's like here and there. 
center light are reflecting. And of course, all right. So let's just uh, let's just uh, dig down in here and give that tomato a. Uh, that has nothing to do with red, does it? Give it a little bit of a connection to its to its stem there, and at that point you do have a little bit more of that deep shadow to where it goes, where it connects with the stem. Just a very loose, a very uh, primitive uh, demonstration to show you that you you rarely you rarely are going to see that really brilliant red, the real red straight out of the tube. You're, you're not going to see very much of it. What you are going to see is that color in that terminator area where shadow falls or where, where, the, where the image falls out of shadow and, and into light right in here. And then as it moves down the object you see it falling in deeper and deeper into shadow. So that then pretty much tells you about using those bright colors. Now we have lots and lots and lots of um, video tutorials on our site all dealing with color, the problems of color. If you go in, go to the site and you go to the menu and click on videos by subject and then cursor down to color, you'll see a whole list of them dealing with all kinds of aspects of color and how color works. And also, uh, if you have a, something that's bothering you, something that's puzzling you, you'd like for me to do a quick tip of, you know, drop us a comment right down here and let me know and we'll put that one on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.